In this video, we're going to look at how we make a decision to choose which type of trend line will fit the best to data that we have. Let's start off with some data. In columns A and B, X values and Y values, Y is equal to the square root of the value in X. So you can see that the square root of 1 is 1, the square root of In this video, we're going to look at how we make the decision to choose which type of trend line is the best fit for the data that we have. So let's take an example here. We have a data table with X and Y values, X running from 5 to 100, and Y is equal to the square root of X. So we can see easily that the square root of 100 is 10. So now let's look at some fitted trend lines and decide how we're going to choose which one is the correct one. So here we have the scatter plot of y versus x. The data plotted as blue dots. And we fitted the default, which is a linear trend line which is this red line here. And as you can see, as you can expect, in order to be linear, the data will initially start below the trend line, rise above it, and then decline, because we're seeing a convex curve in the data due to the fact that the data is the square root of x. So how good is this fit? A good test for fit is to look at the R squared value, which essentially is the correlation value squared between the data points for X and Y. And in the menu, we can select to show that display. So now we have in the legend, we have the R squared value, and we can see it's 0.972, where the minimum range is going to be 0 and the maximum is going to be 1. So it's pretty close to 1 and you would normally say naively that this would be a good fit. However, as we've explained in other videos, the data is not randomly distributed on either side of the trend line. As we said, it starts below the trend line, rises above the trend line for a number of data points, and then below it again. So this is clearly not the best connected fit, best fit for the, the data. Let's try another type of trend line and see if that's better. So here we have the menu again and we're going to select a different trend line. It's currently set at linear. Let's try exponential and see what happens. Well, clearly, as we can see, the exponential assumes that the curve must be rising positively. And so it's even worse than the linear fit. And as we would expect, the R squared value is lower, 0.867. So let's finally try the only other option we have left, which is the polynomial. So we select the polynomial, and we're actually given the number of degrees that we can use. So we can go from as low as 2, which would mean that the values would be set up as x squared, x, and a constant. Um, but we're going to select 3, which is an x cubed value, an x squared value, an x value, and a constant. And we'll update. Now here we have a much better fit. As you can see, the trend line seems to cut through most of the data. The R squared now is 0.999, extraordinarily close to 1. And we would say that's a very, very good fit for the data, as you have. Let's look at the equation for that data and see what we get. So in the menu, we will select the display for the, the legend from custom, which is just giving us a default trend line for data series 1, and we're now going to use the equation instead. 
And to make it more visible, we are going to move the legend to the bottom so that we can see it. We'll update. So now here is the equation that will fit that line to that the level that we see. A very small value, 6.19e to the minus 6, so a very, very small value of x values cubed, minus 1.452e to the minus 3, again a small value of x squared, plus 0.168x, plus 1.567 as a constant. This seems to give us a pretty good fit for the equation. So this seems to give us a very good fit for the data that we've got. And given that in real data would be noisy and you wouldn't really have any underlying knowledge of the actual um, transform of the data, this is probably as good as you're going to get um, with a naive uh, fit. And this would be perfectly adequate for many cases, but you would not be able to use the equation except as an estimate of the way the data points lie, and maybe as a hint as to what should be happening. However, we know that the data actually is y is equal to the square root of x. So we know that this equation cannot be representing the data. In the next video, we're going to show you how to determine the correct way of transforming the data so that you will get the correct equation out of the data.